work for you today. Now, as always, we want you to join in on our conversation, and so many of you already have, which is great to see. You can tweet us at APTN in Focus, or you can send us an email at infocus at aptn.ca. All right, let's jump right to it. You may know the Indigenous Winnipeg Jets logo, but maybe not the artist who designed it. Letitia Spence is the graphic designer behind the logo. She hails from the Pimichikamak Cree Nation in northern Manitoba. Her design has become a staple at Winnipeg Jets games. She also helped design a keepsake coin with the Royal Canadian Mint that commemorated residential school survivors. She designed a logo for a Winnipeg-based company to help celebrate National Indigenous Day that also raised money for a local Indigenous organization. Her other designs can be found on her website, LetitiaSpence.ca, and she joins me now. It's so great to have you here in studio uh, for APTN and Focus. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, now, I, I feel like I have so many questions to ask you just because I've seen your work all over the place. Um, but I want to start simple. And maybe how did you first get into art? Like what, what sort of drew you to art? Was it a family member or did you just sort of gravitate towards art, you know, always? Um, I think for me, I kind of got into art at a really young age through my mom and stuff like that. She kind of like really nurtured, I guess, that sort of part of me and my lifestyle and so yeah like even when I was kind of in and out of reserves because my mom was a teacher as well um, I was kind of always using that also as a way to kind of cope being in those spaces so yeah so what what drew you to art like what do you like about art so much what sort of caught your attention right from the get-go I think for me it was always just about catching like a feeling or trying to illustrate feelings because like for me personally uh, especially when I was growing up I was a really shy <laughs> kid so like and I didn't really like talk a lot I suppose so I kind of used it as a way to express how I was feeling inside so internal stuff well and so uh, we were just talking uh, just off camera you said you used to do painting a little bit more before right but you so you still do that on the side a little bit but you're also digital and print and uh, is, is it hard to balance sort of all these different things as well as uh, graphic design another thing is that sort of hard to balance all these different I guess genres of, of art um, to a certain degree, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I think once I started taking up like graphic design, like, because I used to have a really heavy focus on drawing, kind of like more like hands on type of media and stuff like that. But once I learned how to use like Illustrator, it was like <laughs> that was kind of it. So, yeah. Well, can you explain the difference between, you know, drawing something with, like you said, hands on and, and as opposed to using a computer screen? Like, so what's the difference sort of there in, in terms of artistically or creatively? Um, I think with paint and stuff like that or with drawing like it was kind of like a way to well that's a really hard question yeah it, it's a loaded <laughs> like question I know I know of, like why did I stop painting oh I think it's just like for me like the way that I envision things in my head it's a lot more easier to kind of like apply that to like a digital plot or a digital media and stuff like that I think right. so it's a lot more easier for me to do that versus like you know what my hands are capable of doing mm -hmm. Although that's not bad too, but. <laughs> well, it, it, do you find, is there a time when you sort of gravitate towards maybe painting and using your hands? Is, is there like a s certain time that you would gravitate towards that? Um, I think for me, it's like when I want to relax or just kind of like zone out for a bit, it's definitely painting. Right. Because many hours can kind of slip by as mm -hmm. you go along, so yeah. No, for sure. And then this is, again, I, I could be a hard question, sort of an overall question, but what does art mean to you and, and being able to, to do art and do what you want with, with art? What does that mean to you to be able to do that? Well, um, for me, like in a lot of ways, just because of like how I've grown up, it's a way to survive. <laughs> And it kind of always has had that kind of like facet to it. Um, as I mentioned, like I was kind of like in and out of reservations because my mom's a teacher. So like in a lot of these spaces, like I needed to, that to sort of like, I guess like cope and to, to kind of like manage my emotions and feelings, kind of feeling isolated out there. Um, and as I grew older, it was kind of like a way for me to uh, carve up like kind of a path for myself, I suppose. Right. Yeah. Well, and then so one of the things that uh, a lot of people know you for is the Winnipeg Jets and the Wasack logo. How did all of that come about? I'm, just, I'm so curious in the origin story of, of how that sort of came about from from right from the beginning. Yeah, um, for me, I actually worked at Wasack during their like summer sort of like um, internships and stuff like that. So um, I kind of got to know them through that way, and then. 
I think in that following winter, they approached me with this um, idea to do th these logos and stuff like that because they wanted to um, create like this Wysak night and what it is right now, mm -hmm. basically. Um, and so, yeah, I got asked to go there and I was still in school, actually. <laughs> it was like finishing up. So it was like I was in <laughs> in their like studio kind of working with the creative team there right. um, and also going to Red River College and just kind of like bouncing back and forth. So, yeah. So when they approach you, I mean, what goes through your mind? Like you said, you're still finishing school. Like I imagine you might be taken aback a little bit by that, if not a lot, right? Oh, for sure. Like, I mean, as I said, like I was a, still a student and I didn't really know where I was going with my career too, because like, yeah, like I think I actually failed <laughs> my second year. So I was there for like an, an additional third year just to finish that up. So I was just like, I don't know what's going to happen with my career, what I'm going to be doing. So when they came up to me and asked me, I didn't even really think that it was going to be as big as it was, I suppose. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I knew I was going to create it, or whatever, but I thought I'd be more like in the background, kind of. Right. So, yeah, like this all is just very like, I don't know. It's it's like lightning in a bottle, to be honest, and it still kind of has that facet. So, yeah, <laughs> like mm -hmm. it's really cool that people like it, though. So, yeah. Well, on that note, you like, could you envision back then just how? big this was the logo would be and how big the, the night as a whole and it's just, it seems to grow like every year could you envision that back then or like how what is what is that like for you um i mean i thought that the night i knew the night itself would really resonate with a lot of like indigenous people just because like yeah we really like hockey mm -hmm. i don't know my entire family's obsessed with hockey and the jets and stuff like that so like i knew that that part was going to be big and maybe to a certain extent like the logo but like not <laughs> the attention i suppose yeah <laughs> so then when you see the logo it's, it's everywhere people i think like that logo better than the the logo they have so what's that like for you to see all these logos um you know there's all over canada north america even uh, there's a story that someone down in mexico had well, like when you hear that what's that mean to you oh i don't even know how to comprehend that to be honest so, you know what i mean like i just really can't comprehend the magnitude of that so like I don't know for me it's really cool and i love that people kind of like resonate with that and i think that's the most important thing that i wanted people to kind of how i wanted them to react mm -hmm. not that i had any expectations for how people react to my work so yeah i don't know it's just really dope yeah well it, it, I, like, <laughs> I love the jersey um i think we we actually have one out out front in our lobby the the wasak jersey it's it's a uh, great jersey but when you're doing work just in any piece you do is there sort of an overall or underlying message that you're trying to show or is it sort of dependence on each work? I think the way that I, I guess like what I'm trying to achieve with my work and stuff like that, because for me, I use honestly like my work as a way to kind of like connect to my ancestors and to kind of like envision what a world, uh, what their world would have looked like. And so like when I'm doing each and every piece, I'm doing heavy amounts of research and stuff like that, just to make sure that I'm kind of capturing these symbols and these like different kind of motifs in the correct way and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I don't know. I think I just want to kind of like showcase that part of my culture and that part of my family. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I hope other people kind of like Res I don't know, really vibe with that, I suppose. I don't know. Right. Well, so what's your process? You, you talked a little bit about the process, but I'd love to know what's your process like when you sort of get a piece or your commission to do something? What's, can you just sort of walk us through what your process is? Because I know every artist is different. I just love to know what yours is. Yeah, so for me, um, when I get a piece, you know, obviously there's conceptualizing, but for me, I kind of, and this is like the one thing that I keep telling my mom, it's like, if I wasn't doing art, I'd honestly be looking into like, working on like preserving cultural historical artifacts and stuff like that because like I really love textiles I really love it like I don't know it's really fascinating to me and so I love to research heavily into that and then kind of see what I can what I can bring and what's coming up or whatever when I'm kind of working that into um, either illustrations or logo work that kind of stuff so mm -hmm. yeah well, with the Jets logo aside, I mean, that, that's obviously a major piece and, and something that a lot of people re really resonate with. But is there something else that you've worked on that stands out to you personally for something, for whatever reason that might be? Um, I think for me, I mean, there's a couple. I did one for like CBC um, and that was a really special project to me because like uh, the person that I kind of created that for was, his name was like Jeremy Rat, and he was kind of, he's Cree and Machif and yeah, like he like commissioned me to create this like logo top, um, which kind of like 
coinc- I don't know. Sorry. Hold on a minute. <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, no, he kind of like described his dream to me. And the thing is, like, I also had a similar dream as well. So it was kind of like blending those two imageries together and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. it, yeah, that was a really special one as well as like the Henry Armstrong rewards. Right. Like, cause that one, I don't know. I just kind of like had it in my head and I was like, oh, so yeah, it was like kismet. So so is, it, is there, I don't know if this is a proper term, but I know there's writer's block for writers. Is there like an artist block at times for, if, for artists? Is that, is that a real thing? I, for sure, the burnout is real. <laughs> the burnout is definitely real. I think even just up until recently, like I kind of experienced a little bit of that. Um, and so I kind of like took some time off just because like, you know, I like, for example, ITAC actually, I kind of created like an illustration piece uh, during that period of time and I didn't know if like I don't know at the time I was like I don't like this <laughs> I don't know if what I'm doing is right or whatever but now that I had like that time to kind of like take a step back or whatever I was just like it's, it's not bad I don't know why I was beating myself up that much but yeah so well given everything that we we've talked about so far I mean how important is it that indigenous art and, and culture is out there in the world and that us as indigenous people were able to showcase a little bit of who we are through art and through these designs and through graphic design and the, how important is that i mean visibility is really important right we need to see ourselves especially like in this country in particular where there is a lot of like racism <laughs> mm-hmm. let's be real like there's still it's still prevalent and stuff like that and we need to see different versions of ourselves i suppose or like you know rather than what like we've been told because like, i don't know growing up like being indigenous wasn't cool at that time (laughs) being indigenous wasn't like something that you could be loud and proud about like Mm -hmm. and so yeah like i think it's very important for us to kind of like have our voices be heard and have us be visible and stuff like that just because like yeah there was a time where like my parents still talk about like (laughs) what they experience as children and stuff like that and it's really awful so yeah i think it's very important and are you that's really well said by the way and, and um, are you able to share with us maybe yes, a project or two you got coming up that uh, might be in the works in the next few weeks or months here <laughs> publicly I don't know if you're if, if there's anything that you can share publicly or not but uh, I mean publicly not really okay all right <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, but there is stuff coming up but yeah so is it um, so is, is most of your work now graphic design is that sort of your sort of your niche right now is that yes so what's that i i know i'd asked about what the graphic design versus all this other you know genres were but primarily graphic design i mean it, what's that sort of like to do that sort of full time now um i think what is it like to do a full time for me like i don't know it's just I mean, it's cool that I get to do something that I love doing for work. Do you know what I mean? Um, But it's also cool to kind of explore different ways that you can like play around with imagery and visuals and stuff like that through computer. So I suppose like that's, Mm. that would be my answer. (laughs) Like, yeah. And I can't let you go without asking you about if you have any advice for any other indigenous artists or maybe other indigenous youth and people that are like, hey, like, you know, I'm feel like I'm arty, I feel like I'm creative, I draw all the time, or, I mean, there's graphic design, like, there's so many different things. Is there any advice on maybe what somebody could do or how to get started and maybe making a career out of it? Um, any advice? I mean, oh, I have so much to say. <laughs> I'm trying to no, figure out a yeah. way to just kind of, like, condense it into one or two sentences. But, like, basically, yeah, like, I don't know, I just would love to see, like, more indigenous graphic designers out there and the thing is like i am seeing that now which is great like i i'm always kind of like looking for like multiple people to kind of like add to my list of people to also recommend out right and stuff like that because yeah like there is like a huge like uptick in interest um for indigenous graphic designers and artists and and so yeah like i i suppose (sighs) some advice Ooh, sorry, I'm no, trying to think. Good, I'm like, yeah. what is good advice? Um, <laughs> like, I don't know, just get out there, like, network with people. Like, that's pretty much it. And that's kind of like how I was able to kind of like wedge my toes in there, mm-hmm. you know, is to just really like right, yeah. elbow my way in there. So, For like, sure, yeah, yeah, I advise the same thing. It's just like, just get out there and don't be afraid. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. 
Well, that's really good advice, uh, advice Leticia, and we certainly appreciate you coming in. Like I said, it's, it's always great to chat with, with people in person. Mm -hmm. um, so we really appreciate it, and your work is just uh, magnificent. So I want to say thank you, Miigwech, to you for coming in and joining us here on EPTN and Focus. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. <laughs> Well, we asked for you at home to share some of your works of art, and you certainly did not disappoint. So much so that we have to break social media into two parts. Our social media editor, Jesse Andrushko, joins us now with work from you submitted to us. Thank you, Daryl. We put out a call for all the artists in our audience to submit their work, and wow, what a response. It was hard to narrow it down, but here's some of our favorites. Karen Notaki's Barnes from Three Sisters Design shared these walleye fish leather vamps on home tan deer hide moccasins. She says she tanned both the fish and deer leather and they were gifted to her partner who had caught the walleye and spear walleye spear fishing and deer last hunting season. Beautiful, awesome work. Shanta Kish Ik Webb is a web designer from Shewatooth territories. She says she was taught by her late grandfather David Martin and uncle Raven Spirit Dwyer White. Shanta sent us a ton of great pieces. Here's one in particular that really stuck out to me. I really like the style. Chloe Bluebird Mustouche is an artist and illustrator from Alexis Nakota Sioux Nation. She shared this stunning piece. I really like the color choice and detail. Damon John Little shared this really interesting, intense painting. Damon is a Cree artist from Atuka Coupe. Damon lived from, for two years in France and, and learned art there. Now they're back in Atuka Coupe working at the school. Lucy Fern is Dene from Fond du Lac, Saskatchewan. She shared these beautiful earrings she made, very intricate, really nice with the medicine wheel color scheme. Here's an awesome cartoon created by Jordan Misik, shared by his sister, Stephanie Fiddler. From Sandy Lake, Ontario, Jordan is OG Cree and now lives in Ottawa. He works for Atomic Cartoons as a location designer and has been drawing his whole life, right from when he was a kid in school. Stephanie says his teachers used to say to him, doodling is not gonna get you a job. Look at him now, she says, awesome work. Lastly, here's a piece from Corey Parkin. Corey says there's two things he's very passionate about, his culture and sports team. So he's always looking for ways to blend the two. Really cool work. Thank you all for sharing. I'll be back later with more of your submissions. If you want to send your work, here's how. Join our conversation now. Like us on Facebook on our APTN News page. Follow or tweet us at APTN in Focus, and send your thoughts to infocus at aptn.ca. Some great stuff there. We do have to step aside for a moment, but we'll have plenty of art talk still to come. Stay with us.
Welcome back to APTN In Focus. Let's go back to social media now with our social media editor, Jesse Andrushko, to see more of what you, the audience, submitted. Thanks, Daryl. We made a call for art and our audience responded. Let's take a look at some more submissions. First from 13-year-old Sage Harrington. She painted this in her grade seven art class in Ganawage Mohawk territory. Sage got her friends to put their handprints on it in red. Really impactful piece. Bethany McKay is a Dakota artist and designer from Sioux Valley Dakota Nation. She does both traditional and digital art, specializing in painting and graphic design. Bethany says though, through art, she's maintained her connection to, to, to Dakota culture. She says her artwork strives to show the beauty, resilience, and strength, not only embedded in Dakota culture, but also as indigenous person living in the world. Beautiful work, Bethany. Haley George is a Wet'suwet'en artist. Haley says she is sure to learn and share her language, culture, history, and make sure that her Facebook followers know the real truth about those schools and Canadian history. This piece is from her Gardens of the Universe line, where she uses two hoops and beads of a flower onto the smaller hoop, all done in spruce grouse colors. Really well done. Here's a painting from Johnny Bovin, titled Etikamu, which means caribou path in Inu Amin. Johnny created this art piece after a trip to Pesimit with a group of land guardians where he says he received teachings on the caribou. Johnny is a proud Innu. The caribou is very close to our culture and identity. Beautiful work. Jenna Mallet is a Winnipeg-based artist from Fisher River Cree Nation who currently is working at Odin's Eye Tattoo and Piercing on Portage Avenue. She has been tattooing approximately five years, but also enjoys painting on canvas, carving pottery, and much more. Jenna shared some of her recent work with us. Really powerful. Here's one from Liana Latandra. Liana says she is a very proud Métis woman from the Red River and has been very involved with her culture. She shared this art piece with, that was commissioned with a bison skull that came from the One Arrow First Nation. Awesome work, Liana. Lastly, from Shade Sandy. Shade is an emerging native artist from Osikowin, Ontario. This piece is titled Res Life and shows the main intersection of downtown Osikowin to show the more contemporary landscapes of indigenous civilization. Love the style. Thank you all for sharing. We'll be posting more submissions on our InFocus Twitter page, so watch out for that. If you want to submit your work, here's how. Join our conversation now. Like us on Facebook on our APTN News page. Follow or tweet us at APTN in focus and send your thoughts to in focus at aptn.ca. Again, absolutely fantastic work submitted by everyone. Well, let's keep this thing going. And our next guest joining us today is Jean Bushkagen from Thunder Bay, Ontario. Jean specializes in portrait works with a focus on using colored pencil. Jean, thanks so, so much for joining us here on APTN and Focus. I want to start off the interview uh, by just asking you about how you sort of got started doing your art, or was it something you've just always done and it progressed as you uh, got older? Well, when I was a kid, I used to live with the Johnsons on, the, on my first nation, and uh, and uh, they kind of like got me. He, the, one of the family members, was really good at drawing and painting, and he like kind of got me started a little bit. But, it wasn't until high school and until I started really getting good. People started noticing, and and then uh, from then on, I just I continued, you know. Mm. So, what is it about doing portraits? I know uh, you, you do a lot of portraits. What is it about those that you enjoy doing so much? You get to learn a lot of stories. Like I'm, I'm a I'm a people person, and I, I hear everybody's stories. And there's a there's a of course in a uh, native country, there's a lot of sad stories, and and just, you know. Be, the stories are the best, you know, and uh, you're just meeting the people and, uh, and of course, uh, uh, there's a mon monetary side to it too, of course. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, do you, I, I've noticed you use colored pencil a lot as well. Is that, do you exclusively use colored pencil or do you use other stuff as well? Um, I tell my customers who, who hire me for the commissions that they, you know, I, I it's, it's going to be a colored pencil drive, but I do do uh, acrylic, I put acrylic in there a little bit, so it's like mixed mix media, and it turns out great. So why why colored pencil specifically? It's just a medium, like you could, uh, it's like working with a with, with a pen, you could just do anything fine point. It's just much, so much easier. So when did you sort of make that distinction of, hey, like I'm gonna start doing colored pencils a little bit more? 
like uh like I, I tried acrylics and uh, just by itself and, and I did watercolor and it just sometimes it just seems messy to me and the pencils I could just hold right in my hand you know and just mm. communicate what I want and put it right on paper and just it's, it's perfect for me now Gene this question might seem uh, like a, a sort of an overall question but what does art mean to you and being able to to do art it's well it's a freedom and you know, it just you get to express yourself and put it on paper and your feelings and the you because you because you love your people, you love your culture, you love everything about it, and you want to show the world, you know, and just it's you're expressing yourself basically, and it's, it's a freedom. Mm -hmm. And at what point you did was there sort of the the thinking that hey I can start doing you know my drawings and my art sort of on a on a more regular basis and start making a career out of this? At what point was that distinction made? It was like uh, maybe five six years ago. I like I wanted to do in the beginning I wanted to do my art and uh, I would hope people would buy it and and uh, you know, it wasn't happening because I was not a social person back then. But now I am and uh, and in a uh, and then the commissions just started rolling in as soon as I put my face on uh, social media. <laughs> That's what the people want. They want to know who's creating the artwork. Right, for sure. And is there a message or a takeaway from your art that you try to do, or, or is it maybe dependent on, on whatever the piece is? I think everybody that you know sees my artwork, they just they just fall in love with it, and they, they, they can see culture from the, from the beginning. And, uh, uh, that's that's what I'm trying to push across, and it's just, just everybody everybody's loving it. Well, how important is that culture aspect to you, and, and to make sure that the, that uh, the culture does come across when you're doing an art piece? Well, when my, my mom raised us, and um, and um, she she you know tried to she tried to be uh, traditional with us, and um, but we're in the city, of course, so there's only so much you could do, and it's it's just it's everything for you know you want to. Culture is everything for you. It's, it's from the heart, you know? Mm -hmm. And when you're working on an art piece, uh, Gene, is it hard to work on a piece for a little bit and then end up giving that to someone else or, or having somebody else buy that piece? Do you get attached to them at all? Or, or is it just... Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, especially the ones that I do for myself. And uh, you, know, <laughs> you're, you, you, don't want, you don't want to say it, but they're, they're your babies. You're, you're giving them away. You know, you put time and effort into this piece and... <laughs> Here, I'm something. now I got to mail it off to California or whatever. <laughs> Are there any pieces that you won't sell that you have in your personal collection? Oh, I, I did some drawings of the family members, and you know, no, of course, I, nobody's going to want to buy that anyways. <laughs> Okay, I see. And do, do you teach at all? Like, are you uh, offering any sort of uh, on-the-side lessons for somebody who might want to learn how to, to even just uh, color pencil, or, or you said you do some acrylics? Do you teach at all? Uh, no, not really. I've, I've, I've had some people ask me, but I just, uh, I don't know, I got a daytime job, and just, I don't know. Just, I, just, I just haven't. Would that be something that maybe down the road you, you would be interested in doing? Yeah, yeah. It, that'd be really neat. Well, and so also, Gene, what does it mean to you to have people reaching out to you and, and they want a piece from you? What, what does that mean to you? It's, it's, it's really uplifting. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's life changing, you know, because, uh, you know, I've, I've been sober like uh, 11 years now. And uh, now it's just, it's, it's a 360 degree thing that, you know, life changing. When you sober up and you start taking commissions and people are applauding you and, you're you're doing stuff like this and i was in uh, the walleye last year and it's, it's just totally life-changing well and so are you able to share with us uh, are you working on any uh, big pieces coming up or are you just uh, sort of keeping on with, with yeah uh... yeah i just finished one up last night and uh it's a drawing of christina restool she's a uh a, a jingle dress dancer from down by toronto area and i'll be posting it online in a few days here i'm just oh. waiting for good weather <laughs> okay, and, and uh, so are you able to share maybe how long that uh, piece took that uh, you worked on? Um, it took me like a week, but uh, there was a couple of commissions in the way, and, uh, and I, I, you know, I just concentrate on the commissions, then I'll go back to my piece. Right, okay. Well, I'm sure every artist is the same.
Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, can you sort of explain how the, how the process works? I'm always fascinated because every artist has their own sort of process. Um, but what's your process sort of like? Like how, uh, from the time somebody reaches out to you, how long uh, does it take for a piece to be done and then uh, get that piece shipped to whoever um, got that piece? I try to make it as smooth as possible for every customer. Like they'll contact me on Messenger or on Facebook and, uh, and uh, they want to know my prices and the sizes and, uh, and then... Uh, once, once I take care of that, and then they send me the photo, and then I tell them in the email, uh, messenger, messenger uh, that uh, uh, four to six days, because I got I got a, I got kids, days so I gotta take care of my kids after after work, and then I get the paint after that. The drop. Oops, so sorry. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> well, then uh, did, that's <laughs> kind of you led into my next question: Is how can somebody get a hold of you if if they want you to do a, a work of art? Oh, just through uh, Facebook or Messenger. So sorry about that. No, no, that's all right. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Facebook Messenger is the easiest way to, to get a hold of you if they want something? Yes, yes. And then if, uh, like, is there anything that you might not do right now that you'd be looking to do sort of in the future when it comes to art? Uh, no, no, no. I'm I'm open to all, all commissions and, uh, you know, and I do my own stuff. I have a big selection if anybody's interested in looking at my stuff. Well, Gene, your, your work is just phenomenal. I've, I've seen it all over social media. It's really great stuff. Yeah. And uh, I do want to say thank you, Miigwech, so much for, for coming on. We'll leave our interview there, but uh, wishing you nothing but the best uh, moving forward here with, uh, with, your, with your pieces. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Ojibwe artist Jackie Travers is seeing her fabric designs being snapped up across Turtle Island. APT and Sav Jones went to her studio to see where she comes up with her beautiful ideas. Yellow, turquoise, and even lavender are some of the bright colors adorned with floral motifs in a new fabric line designed by Jackie Travers. Aptly named Ojibwe Florals, Travers has a strong vision for their use. Ribbon skirts, of course, exactly, and ribbon shirts and star blankets and little dresses for little girls, shirts for boys. I want to see Indigenous people wearing them. Born and raised in Winnipeg, the multidisciplined Ojibwe artist from Lake St. Martin First Nation is well known for her bold, colorful paintings. But she says designing fabrics has always been her dream. I've been wanting to do fabrics for, for like 10 years. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a designer, right? And that just never happened for me. Um, I kind of shifted towards being a painter. I want to be an artist after that. Painting led her to a fine arts education where her style and culture wasn't always respected. But she says that's how she knew she was doing something right. Art school just before I graduated, they hated them at my critiques. They put them down. They just didn't. And I was like, I'm on to something. She has since had many milestones, like designing this stamp for Canada Post's truth and reconciliation series it's just kind of in me like i just always want to be creating i always want to be painting or making something it just it's very healing it was during the pandemic when she realized her dream of working in textiles thanks to the surge and people learning how to sew like so during the pandemic like i which i pretty much gave up on ever having my own fabric line i started making appliques so I started using my artwork and put it, getting them printed on uh, fabric and figured this way people can put my artwork on the front of their ribbon skirts and they became really popular. Her work got the attention of Siltex, a textile supplier she had contact with a decade prior. Thanks to their partnership, Traverse's fabric and ribbon designs are now available in over 50 stores across Canada and the United States. I was like blown away that people really wanted to buy the fabric you know people were excited and um, when I posted it I got a lot of comments a lot of questions and and Celtic said the the fabrics are selling really well so that makes me happy and the demand is huge becoming the most anticipated pre-order in Siltec's history 90 percent of it sold out before stock even arrived and work is already underway for her next designs when we create the next uh, line of fabrics, we want to have some butterflies and some dragonflies and maybe some ladybugs and hummingbirds. Until then, Travers continues working on her art. 
something she never wants to stop. I always feel like uh, time is fleeting, so I should always be creating. I want to do as much as I can, leave as much as I can for my, my children and my grandchildren. All right, it's time for one more short pause here on the program. We still have one more interview to go, though, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back to ABTN In Focus. A Mi'kmaq artist in Newfoundland is reviving a largely forgotten tradition. In the process, he's helping others explore and express their identity. Here's that story. An artist, actor, filmmaker, and powwow dancer, Jerry Evans also breathes life into the revival of traditional indigenous tattoos. I mean, there's only two, uh, um, two visual documents. Uh, visual documentations of 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 our people's uh, tradition of of, of uh, body tattooing. Since the mid 1980s, Evans has been using art to speak to his ancestry. Like many in Newfoundland, the attempted assimilation of Mi'kmaq people and erasure of Mi'kmaq culture had a profound impact on him and his family. You know, my artwork for me became a a means to. To learn about uh, who I was, who my family is, who our people are here in this place. Last summer, Evans was selected as one of six Indigenous artists for the collective's tattoo training residency in Kelowna. Now he's inking friends in the basement of his home in St. John's, including people from Inuit, Mi'kmaq, and Metis communities. Today it's his friend, Stephen George, 
who already has a tattoo of his great-grandmother Teresa on his left arm, and on his right, a tattoo of his great-grandfather, Tom George. I wanted something to connect the two ancestors on either arm. And uh, what Jerry's doing now is, is really, a, I'd call it Tom Gook, you know, uh, which is Mi'kmaq for Newfoundland, land over the water. Evans and George were both denied Indian status and membership under the Halibu Mi'kmaq Band. But they say status is not what defines them as Mi'kmaq people. For Evans, the tattooing and its importance to him and others isn't something Canada can measure in defining Indigenous people. It's part of not just me reclaiming something that was denied our family, but it's something that was de denied here in this place for most of our people. And it's a way to reclaim our, our traditions, our power, you know, and uh, I'm honored to have, uh, you know, to, to be able to do this. You know, I'm doing this as a, uh, with a purpose, you know, to help bring back our, uh, our power. And joining us now is the man from the story, Jerry Evans. Well, Jerry, thank you so much for being here today. It's an absolute pleasure to be able to speak with you. Now, I've been uh, looking at your work online and on your website and social media and all that. Uh, I, I see you do so many things. I mean, you're a, you're a painter, you're a filmmaker, you're a tattoo artist. My first question for you is, have you always had this creative touch? Uh, yes, I guess I have. Uh, my, my folks moved uh, quite a bit when I was young and uh, I, I found myself uh, uh, you know, with my siblings, but uh, I guess that's how, how I kind of spent my time before I got, to, you know, to meet new friends and so on. Then you know, I spent a lot of time drawing, like a lot of kids do. But uh, I guess I, I was lucky enough to have. Uh, by the time I got to high school, I had a great uh, high school art teacher that that uh, saw my abilities and and helped me take it further. Yeah. Well, Jerry, what is it about art that, that you sort of gravitated towards? What, what, what was it about, you know, being able to create your own works? Well, I guess for me, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a way of expression. Uh, for me, it's, it's, it's a way for me to, uh, uh, growing up here in, in, in Yodongok in Newfoundland, um, and not growing up on a reserve, I, you know, the, I, I, I'm kind of re embracing my, my cultural heritage through research and so on, and and uh, and I guess uh, I express that through my visual art. I speak through it through my through my visual art. You know, it's it's a way for me to to uh, uh, celebrate who I am and where I'm from, and and to share that with uh, with my community. Well, and as I mentioned, you do uh, so many different things, Jerry. Do you prefer one uh, over the other, uh, or, or do you sort of like them all that the same? Uh, I, well, uh, I would ideally like to be spending my time in my studio, you know, whether it be printmaking or painting, or, or as of late, I've been uh, working a lot in, in film with uh, uh, projections, and and uh, you know, I have someone who. Uh, who has the technical skills to help me bring my ideas to fruition, which is which is new and, and exciting. But uh, I think my happy place is is uh, making marks on canvas or stone or what have you, you know, and, and uh, just being in, in that zone to produce something that that uh, whether you know it's, it's a lithograph or a painting, yeah. Well, and, and sort of on that same note, is it hard to sort of switch from, say, painting to doing some of your filmmaking, or is it hard to sort of uh, switch back and forth? Uh, I mean, it's, it's of course, it's, it's, I guess if you look at it this way, you know, it's, it's, it's a different language in a sense, you know, it's different uh, materials that, that you have to work with and uh, to, you know, to, to try and come, uh, uh, speak to an, an idea that you have and if you want to express it, uh, a uh, certain way, you know, one, I mean, I'm lucky enough to be able to uh, uh, maybe pick something that'll transfer that image or idea that I have better, you know, whether, you know, that I'm speaking to a situation or an idea that I have, it might suit better for for uh, for a film, you know, then I'll, I'll go ahead and use film or if I'm uh, uh, more comfortable with uh, using uh, printmaking, I'll, I'll use that way, yeah. 
Well, and do you have a style of artwork and, and can you sort of explain what that style is? Um, well, I've always had a, had a love since Air College of uh, a love of, of printmaking. Uh, the hands-on, uh, uh, well, I, I say printmaking because I didn't, when I finished Air College at, uh, in 86 at NASCAD, I came back here uh, home and uh, I was lucky enough to have uh, printmaking facilities at St. Michael's Print Shop here in St. John's. And I didn't have a, a studio space, and uh, I just uh, gravitated towards uh, printmaking because of the facilities that were right at hand. And uh, I just kind of uh, um, stayed with that, and 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 kind of uh, explored that whole process of mark making and and that love for it, and and, and, and by having printmaking and. The ability to make prints, you're making more than one, so you're you're able to get your work uh, out more uh, to more uh, uh, venues to for people to see. You're able to keep one for yourself, and as you know, unlike a uh, painting, a painting is a one of a kind, and you know you. Uh, but a, a print where there's multiples, it's more accessible for for someone to buy. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, and Jerry, as, as I mentioned, you're also a tattoo artist, so I have to ask. I mean, how, how did you, how did that sort of come about, and, and when did you realize, like, hey, like, uh, a, I want to do this, and and b, I, I kind of have a knack for doing some traditional tattoos. Well, in order to be a tattooist, uh, I mean, you do need to have those uh, drawing skills, and uh, I've always had that interest in tattooing, and I was lucky enough to have uh, some good friends, uh, uh, Jordan uh, Bennett and uh, his wife Amy Malbuff, uh, who were part of a uh, Earthline. Uh, tattoo school in Kelowna, working with uh, Dion Kezas, and I was invited there back in 2016, I believe. And I spent a month there in Kelowna learning uh, how to uh, do hand poke tattooing uh, with with these guys and uh, and, uh, and other students from across Canada, from across uh, Turtle Island. And we had uh, mentors from uh, from far away as uh, Aotearoa, uh, Maori uh, a tattoo artists, and and. Uh, we had uh, uh, Dean Hunt, my my guy from uh, from the, the he's Hayslap from DC. He was there in, in the Han, uh, and uh, I learned how to uh, to tattoo there. And it, I mean, it's just a, another another way of expressing. Uh, but it's uh, you know I saw the value in it as a as a way of of uh, you know making marks. For our, from you know, for our people, and you know, it's a way as a means of uh, you know wearing permanent regalia every day, right? You mm -hmm. know, wearing our, our cultural marks on our body as, as permanent regalia. So, why the uh, traditional tattoo? You said the the polka. Am I getting that right? The polka. Why why um, that's that stream? Well, we we uh, learned how to uh, to use. Uh, we didn't learn how to use machines, and it's uh, you know we use traditional. Uh, um, um, uh, industry uh, needles and ink, you know, uh, tried and, and tested, uh, uh, you know, tattooing uh, inks and, and needles, and uh, but you know, it's all done by hand. You know, it's it's one one uh, poke at a time, and you know, leaves leaves that deposit of ink. Whereas you know, it's uh, it's uh, whereas a machine would hit a body, uh, uh, hit the skin five hundred times to make a. Uh, a certain shape we do it by hand maybe 50 times so you know you have that kind of pixelating uh, 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 image that uh, encompasses a certain shape but uh, you know it's it's, it's uh, you can look at a, a hand poke tattoo and know that it's a hand poke rather than a, a machine for the most part well the, sort of on that similar uh, line of questioning here Jerry how important is it to be able to express your culture through art whether that be through tattooing or through printmaking or through painting and all of the different how important is it to be able to express your culture through art well for me you know it was a way for me to learn about my uh, about my heritage and uh, my culture and our our material culture our mark making and uh, you know, I reference our uh, our uh, material culture and our sacred objects uh, in my art making, and uh, you know, it's a it's a way for me to celebrate who I am and where I come from, and to uh, you know, to uh, share it with uh, with the people, with the community, and and um, gosh, it's a, it's a loaded question. I don't know if I get enough time to uh, 
to answer that. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's important for me to, you know, in, embrace who I am and where I come from. And I, and I, I you know, I, I shared that with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, those who are also from here. Mm -hmm. Well, I got another loaded question for you here, so I apologize ahead of time, but um, this is sort of an overall question. And, and why is it important to showcase Indigenous art and Indigenous culture to the rest of the world and in, in, in these various mediums? Well, I can only speak for myself. I mean, uh, uh, this being uh, most likely the first place of contact in North America, I mean, we survived uh, uh, colonialism and, uh, 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 you know, the encroachment of Europeans here. <laughs> for for uh, for so long and it's you know it's when i think about it, it's amazing that that uh, you know we are still here but uh, we've lost so much and it's important for artists and writers and storytellers to to keep uh, to keep our culture alive you know and 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 if i could do you know just that one little bit of of uh, of helping re, you know uh, retain and uh, speak to who i am and where where i'm from and and maintain that. I mean, uh, that's that's that's. Uh, I've done a good thing, I think. Mm -hmm. That's really well said. Absolutely. And um, Jerry, are you able to share uh, with us any projects you're currently working on, um, whether that be through through film or uh, any any big uh, productions coming out or printmaking or, or painting or anything like that? Or are you able to share uh, what you're working on? Uh, currently, um, I've got a few things on the go. I've uh, I'm, uh, I finished a, an hour ago working on a film set uh, I just started uh, uh, last week working on a uh, about a six week project of a feature film called Silent Planet it's a sci-fi uh, uh, film and uh, we're building a spaceship out of uh, plywood and uh, and uh, uh, two by fours and so on and uh, it's my job to make the exterior look like copper that's as far as I'll take it but you know we're still developing uh, that whole uh, uh, servicing uh, of, of the spaceship. I, I have a, I have a solo show here at the uh, Provincial Gallery, which is kind of a retrospective. On May 26 is the opening. Uh, I have some work at the Bonavista Biennale uh, this this coming August. I have a, a new projection for for that uh, 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 Biennale, and um, we're. I'm moving out of the city where we're, my wife and I were, and uh, our kids are growing up now. We're, we're building a house on uh, in Miyapugit, First Nation, and we're looking forward to getting out of the city and getting back to the country, and I get back to my uh, my visual art full time. So yeah, I got I get a few things on the go. I would say so for sure. Yeah, that all sounds uh, super intriguing, especially with the, the sci-fi and the move. So best of luck on the move there. Um, but Jerry, if somebody wanted to get uh, in contact with you or they wanted uh, one of your works or something like that, how do they go about uh, getting in touch with you? Uh, they can uh, check out my website. There's some contact information there. They can check out uh, the IOTA Institute. I don't uh, uh, just Google that IOTA Institute. Uh, they represent me They're in Halifax. Uh, they have uh, they carry my work there, but uh, you know, just reach out to me. Well, Jerry, we certainly yeah, sorry, no, we certainly appreciate your time and uh, like uh, everything that you do is just uh, wonderful pieces of work from uh, everything that you do. It's just absolutely fantastic. So I wanted to say thank you, Miigwech, to you for coming on our, our show and, and sharing a little bit of what what you do, and um, it, it's just super breathtaking a lot of the stuff. So thank you so much. Well, Miigwech, um, Marcy. All right, well, that is going to do it for this episode of APTN In Focus. And while I give my end of the show remarks, here's a few more works from our audience. We only have two more episodes to go before the end of the season for APTN In Focus. So today's episode will be available as a podcast. You can listen and subscribe on aptnnews.ca slash podcasts, or you can find us on your favorite player. And if you missed any of our past episodes or a bit of this one, and you want to catch up, you can find them and more on aptnnews.ca slash in focus. For everyone here, I wanted to say thank you so much for joining us. Miigwech, Kinnan Askmaton. Have a great rest of your day.